haven't started my recording. Okay, there we go. Clinic 18, 15th of November, and uh, just very briefly, we'll be talking about complex part modeling using multi-body and how that can help us, and uh, associativity with synchronous ass assembly and the various methods that we have of achieving that. So let's get into part modeling straight away and look at why we'd want to use multi-body to model a part. Um, the, the reason that we do this is where we've got complex models where we want to uh, have uh, procedures on various parts of this that might be difficult to, uh, in any other sense to apply. So we want to be able to isolate uh, various bits of the uh, various bits of the the part uh, as we're building it's a, more like an assembly approach to uh, to building a part but it is at the end of the day a part file so in this example we'll be building three separate components um, they'll be um, we'll build a tool construction body uh, the three separate components will be a rim a hub and the and the uh, support ribs uh, the construction body to to make a shape on the on the face of some of the objects um, this will allow us procedures as I said before on these uh, various bits uh, rather than on the whole uh, we'll use some mixed modes so we'll be using syn synchronous and ordered and we'll be using boolean operations um, fairly extensively so I think this will give you a fairly good idea of what this is all about so Without further ado, let's uh, let's get into it. I'm going to start off um, modeling this part in uh, multi-body straight up. I've just got some sketches to start with, and we all know how to sketch, so I'm not going to bore you with that. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to my add body, and the first body I'm going to create is the rim, the wheel rim. I say OK to that. Uh, that's the sketch for the wheel rim. I'll just pick the uh, that sketch. I want to revolve it around here. Um, you notice with our revolve menu here something that you may not be aware of. By default, when you do a revolve, it will create a live section. If you don't want that to happen, just turn the create revolve section off so it's not highlighted. Okay, I want to do a revolve. As we know, the usual thing is I can do a partial revolve or a full 360, or I can type in 360. Uh, with this, just while we're playing around with it, I'm just going to use my part painter tools and I want to part pretty up some of the faces for this wheel before we even start. So there we go, that'll do. Back to home. Okay, you will notice that. Whilst I created, uh, I used the add body function. I don't have a, a the, the body showing up in here yet. I don't until I create the second one. Um, you'll notice now I've got the uh, rim as the initial body name. I'm going to add another part. This time I'm going to add the hub and say OK to that. Uh, this is my hub. I'm going to pull that down. Uh, I don't know, 40 millimeters would be fine. You'll notice now we've got in our design bodies a rim and a hub, and the hub is active because that's the one I'm working on. Okay, fine. We want to produce a. Uh, I want to put a hole in that. I've pre-done a hole, just a, a counterbore hole, and I need to be to place the hole. I need to be locked onto this face. So F3 to lock onto the face, and I want to pick up the center here. So I use the just pick up the edge there. See that on your screen? Type the C key. And you'll notice it's picked up the center. There's a little red cross in the middle, and I just want to pull that out or to here. I want to align it with the center. So I just line it there with the center. You see the uh, the circle highlight as I do that, and I want that to be 38 millimeters. So I type in 38 into the uh, measurement box, click uh, uh, enter, and click to place, and it places that dimension on there straight away. So you can see right away uh, it's put a dimension on there without me having to dimension it, put it in the right place. So that's using the C. We know that there's an E you can use as well, and I've shown you that in the past. Okay, I don't, uh, I don't need the PMI for the moment. The next thing I want to do, of course, is to uh, select that hole, and I want to pattern it. So we want to have a, uh, a circular pattern. 
and I'll build the pattern on the around uh, in the center of the object there and the count I had last time I did this or did a pattern was eight I want um, four of those and that's fairly normal we've all done that in the past but I've got the hub body active now um, I'm going to go back to my sketch sketches here and I want these two sketches because I want to produce the rib let me just move that up a little bit so another body we're going to add a body this time another time uh, this time called rib and I'm going to do a, a sweep to make that Pick the cross, sec cross section right click click the uh, click the path right click to accept it and then click the cross section and right click to accept that okay I've made my uh, rib there I'm just going to turn off this sketch for a moment and we'll have a look at that rib I don't want to look at the rim I just want to have a look at the rib now what I want to do here zoom up a little bit is to bring this face of the rib here up to the top of the uh, the hub now I can use a face relate to do that so I'll use a coplanar pick the coplanar and pick just the top face of the hub here which will be that plane uh, tick that off accept that and then Yes, previews that and that's brought up to there for me as exactly as I wanted it um, some of the some of the things I might want to do with this um, be things like uh, we may want to put a little bit of um, angle on here so we can put the steering wheel on the face move it off into the corner here and then grab the torus to rotate it and I might bring it out let's say 10 degrees uh, wrong way undo that uh, pay attention to what you're doing mark look at the sign uh, the you notice the orientation of the steering wheel is different this time because of the way I placed it I didn't use the shift to lock it I'll just shift and click on the tool plane there and it rotates it through 90 degrees okay I want to bring this out a few degrees and we'll make that 10 degrees the correct way now I want to uh, put some draft on this face so I can click the tool plane again so my steering wheels oriented the correct way and you can see live rules are applying here and I'm putting the, the draft on there and we'll put uh, I don't know five degrees something like that okay so we're getting a bit of shape here um, you notice that the uh, this rib protrudes inside the hub I want to trim that back several ways I can do that the first way I'm going to do is to use the surfacing tool set and the replace face so replace face pick the face there accept that and pick the outer face of the hub and it trims back uh, the next um, the next operation I want to do is to uh, trim it to the hub we'll notice it sticks through the hub if we look at that carefully now there's several ways I could go about that but the uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a um, instead of the uh, uh, of the replace face which I could use I'm going to use a boolean operation of subtract so this is the body I want to work on I want to subtract from select that off and the rim is the tool body now it gives me a preview in the uh, in the outline there you can see that the, the rim in green my uh, face that I'm removing in blue or removing to in blue and I can accept that that's what I want now the, here's the difference when I accept that we get a um, we still have the rim uh, displayed uh, previously in previous versions of ST5 with boolean operations the body you used for the tool would be consumed by the operation so you'd be left with your target modified which is what you want but your tool body would go and that could be difficult okay moving on the next thing that I want to do to this is to um, modify this and the uh, and, and the top face here to have a dish shape in it and this is going back to my uh, sketches here we'll just zoom out a little bit and I'll turn on that sketch that I had before and I want to use that uh, this is a body 
to make those changes in there. Now, uh, I don't need the rib to be in this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another body, add a body, uh, just call this design body one, because uh, it is just a just a design body. It's not going to be part of my uh, operations, and I'm going to revolve that around the center the same way as we did before and remember I don't want to have a live section so I don't have that turned on my 360 and it creates this big uh, ball now this is design body one what I'm going to do is I want to make that a construction body because it's not part of my final solid so I right click on it and toggle design construction and it's just a design body there let's just turn that off for a moment and zoom up yeah, there's my uh, my uh, hub and my rib, and I want to modify that with my design body. So again, I'm going to use a subtract, and I want to pick that body and that body. Those two, the the, the hub and the rib, as my target. Accept that by green tick, and then my uh, tool object is this um, is this design body here. I select that and it gives me a preview. Let's just zoom in so you can see the preview. Give me a preview of what it's going to do. I'm happy with that. Uh, you notice it automatically hides the design body to its, to its, uh, its uh, hidden then. And tick it off. And we've made those changes there. Now, there's my, des my design body is still there, but it's just it hides it automatically for me. Now I want to go to my hub. I want to activate my hub because I want to work on my hub, so I'm going to right click on that to activate it. Uh, get, getting ahead of myself, sorry. I want to activate that design body. And we need to edit these, uh, edit the, the hole here. You notice it because it's removed some of the counterbore. So it's just a normal edit. I want to change the counterbore diameter this to 20 to clear the head of the screw and make the depth 15. And we've updated that. So it's looking pretty good. Uh, sorry, I should have. I meant to uh, activate that as the the master body and activate that body. Thank you. It, you can see it a little clearer now. I didn't actually have to have it activated to work on it, but it's it it, it is clearer sometimes. Now, back to my rib. Uh, right click on that and activate the body. I'll just let that menu come up for you so you can see it activate that body and we've got uh, I want to work on the rib first thing I want to do is apply some round to it uh, say five millimeters be good that's nice now up until now we've been working on this um, actually before I do that I might do some other changes to it so we can still edit this in the way we did before I change my draft angle there we'll go out another 10 degrees and shift on the shift click on the tool plane and we'll rotate out this way another five degrees so I've changed the shape of that put the round on again I keep getting ahead of myself just round those edges that's looking pretty much like I want now up until now we've been working in synchronous uh, let's add some features in ordered. Now I'm adding them in ordered for a couple of reasons. One, to show you that I can, and two, for these types of features it might be better practice. I'm not showing it, saying it necessarily is. So all I'm doing is uh, clicking on my right mouse button, just giving it one click. The menu comes up and I want to transition to ordered. And we see ordered features down here. First thing I want to do is a thin wall on there, two millimeters and I want to remove that face, that face, and that face. Now, if we'd been modeling this as a single part, to do that thin walling there would have been very difficult with all the other bodies around because we'd have thin walled into the hub and the rim and it wouldn't have quite worked out the way we wanted it. Next thing I want to do here is I want to pattern that, pattern the uh, this body. Now, Let's just take a look at that for a moment. Let's take at the rib, and I want to find out what makes up this rib. So I can look at the 
body features that make up the rib and they're in green so we can see protrusion 3, subtract, uh, subtract 14 and the thin wall. It's sort of a little bit all over the place to, so to uh, select that for patterning right we can't use a feature because all we'll get is a thin wall or a protrusion or something like that so in this case what we're doing is we're going to select the body and again you can see this makes it because we're in multi-part we can just select the single body and uh, do what we need to do in, in this case I'm doing a uh, doing a pattern based on there uh, I'm set up for circular pattern right the center and the direction is that way and uh, my command bar is just a little bit off the off the edge we can't see the, the count in there because I'm using a smaller screen I'm going to make the count uh, 8 and close and we've got our um, we've got our hub and our ribs let's turn on our rim we've now got pretty near what we want in this design so now we need to make it a single part again so I want it just to be a single part so again we use the boolean operations but this time it's going to be a union I'll select the, the rim, the ribs and the hub and accept. Now straight away you'll notice in my design bodies here and finish. You'll notice in my design bodies here I've just got the rim. All the other design bodies have gone. But I can still edit. Notice my 38 there. I want to make that spacing let's say 40. I can still do my synchronous edits and make changes um, if we zoom in on here for instance I might want to pick just that face just that plane and we might, might, might want to just drag that now you notice live rules is applying and the symmetry of the original rib is being applied so it's making them all wider I just make them slightly wider I could change the angle do all of those sorts of things um, let's revolve it over position a little bit I could take um, actually we, we might want to change the the pattern that's better sorry let's go to the pattern uh, and I can edit that click on the sketch there and we want to make that let's say five and we've got five ribs uh, we may want to change the thin wall so again we could edit the thin wall we can see the dimension in there, it's 2 millimeters. I want to make that uh, 5 millimeters, And that's all thicker material. I could move faces, I can do all my synchronous edits, and I can do all my ordered edits. So you can see the power of creating this uh, complex shape using multi-part. I've just wound up with a single part, as before, as we would do normally, but I think you'll agree that the... Um, the means of editing are quite a bit simpler. Okay, um, let's move on. Uh, not to there, to our slides. Uh, back to my slides. Bear with me. Okay, assembly modeling. We're going to be looking at the face relate in assembly. Um, we can see um, also what we call associativity on demand. And I'll explain that term when I get there, but it's being able to say, I want to make this face associate, uh, associative with this face and move them both together from the top level of the assembly. Um, we'll look at interpart copy, both from the traditional point of view and the synchronous point of view, and how the synchronous interpart copy works. It's very powerful. Uh, and then we'll look at uh, this interpart relationships. Now, these are um, unique to. Um, to these have come in, oh when, when do we bring these in, ST3 or uh, ST2 or 3, somewhere around about there. Um, it's a very powerful uh, associativity tool that probably a, quite a few people aren't really aware of. So we'll see how that works. Okay, let's uh, switch over to Solid Edge and I have an assembly here. Now, if we look at this assembly, we'll see that there's no associativity with things. Um, I've actually broken that slightly so I might just reopen that bear with me for a second my apologies in fiddling with it now I've broken that one too now I'll try the other one
Okay, that's good. What I wanted to see is one that uh, we had some gaps between the uh, uh, this part, the sliding part, and the and the base. It's supposed to be a, a, a tight fit in there. Okay. When we um, these uh, these parts, by the way, have been imported from other other CAD systems, so they uh, they're just done bodies. Uh, this has been mo the, uh, the the base has been modelled in Solid Edge, uh, but these two parts have been modelled in different systems. So they're they're done parts anyway. But we we can edit those. So if we want to have an associativity, uh, if I go to my face priority, wait till the screen catches up here, select face priority. From the top level, as we know, I can make changes. And we can see that that's behaving synchronously. Uh, it's symmetrical. But what happens is when I make a move there, the the other part's not, this, this part's not updating. So um, if we wanted to uh, make that happen, we'd need to apply some level of associativity. But first of all, what I want to do is make this block fit the base. And I can use my uh, face relate commands. If we come up to the face relates, we've got the face relate commands, which are the same face relate commands that we have in the part mode available in assembly. So let me show you how you use that. I'm going to use a, a relationship of coplanar. And I'm going to pick multiple faces on the part that I want to uh, make coplanar with something else because I can do it. I could do it in single steps, but that takes a while. So I'm going to pick that face. I want to have this face and that face. All of those are going to be made, each one of those faces independently will be made coplanar to other faces. So I tick it off the selection. Now you'll notice when I tick that off, my first face in there is highlighted in a brighter green. You'll see that sort of got a glowing edge around it. Okay, I need to say what face do I want to make that coplanar with. I'm going to pick this face, the inside face of my block, and accept that. And you'll notice that it moves into position. The face moves to be coplanar with the face I selected. Now we see, if we look carefully, you'll see, I'll just rotate that round a little bit, maybe zoom in a bit, you can see we've got two faces. We've got a face at the top here. I think this one, I've, it's in orange at the moment. That's not selected. Uh, this face to the side here is selected because it glows. It's got that glow around it. It's brighter. If we look from the back, you can see it quite, quite clearly. OK, it needs to be selected to that face. So I select that face, and you'll notice it grows out to meet it. You must hit the Accept or right click. And now our final face, which is this uh, horizontal face here, uh, is asking for what it needs to be coplanar to. It needs to be moved to be coplanar to. Uh, you'll notice that it did the, fir the, the, the vertical faces first, and then the horizontal. It does some, a certain amount of sh sorting. So I'm going to select this uh, horizontal face inside the base, and it snaps up to meet it accept that. So if we look there now, what we see is all of those faces touch. But they're not associative. Um, if I pick that face and move it, let's move it out, not too far, to about there, will do, we see that we're left with a gap in there. It wasn't associative. And we'll address that shortly. OK, the next thing that we want to do is we've got a screw that comes through here and it has to rest on here somehow. So we need some geometry to be brought uh, to, to mate up. I could just construct that from some dimensions I take off that, but as we know, uh, in it's, uh, there's some better tools for doing that. So straight away, uh, we go into edit that uh, part. We just in place edit. And we can see that this is just a body feature, nothing smart about it at all. What I want to do is to use a tool to be able to build some geometry from existing geometry. And the tool that we've had in Solid Edge for a very long time is Interpart Copy. Copies parts or faces from other parts in the assembly into the current part as construction geometry. Okay, so I'll click on that and it says 
Down the bottom, always read the prompt bar. Click on the assembly part to copy from. So it's that is the assembly part to copy from. It goes dark green. Click on the face or faces that you want to be copied. In this case, I only want that face. And I could select several faces, or just that one, and green tick. You'll see now I've got a, an orange face, and if I look over in my edge bar, I've got an interpart copy. Let me just hide the previous level. Control Q is a quick way of doing that. And what we'll see is we've just got our original body and we've got the face. You'll notice that there's a link on that face. If I click on it, it says it's an interpart copy. If I want to find out more information about that, I can go to my uh, tools, uh, interpart manager, and we'll see that it's a child of the, of the base part. I could break the uh, relationships here, do whatever I like with them, but it's remember that that interpart manager is, uh, is a useful tool. Now, because it's associated, this link here, with the original part shape, it, it lies in that area. What we used to do, if we wanted to use that geometry to create some other geometry on here, we would usually use a project to sketch function. So I'll click on that, onto that plane, and then I just pick off the edges that I wanted to select. Right, you can see those being built up on that plane. They're lying on the plane of that face where I said to draw. You'll notice if we zoom in a little bit, they have uh, the associative links on there. These little links, I'll highlight one for you. And that was how, I can't highlight it for some reason. Let me escape out of that and I can select one. Yes, there's a little link there. That was how we used to do our associativity. The body here was used to create a sketch by project. This was the sketch was made associative to the body when the body changed the sketch updated. We know with the synchronous part that these sketches are once we use a sketch sketch to create a part or create a feature, the sketch is thrown away. It's not used anymore. So this associativity has no meaning in that area. So what to do? Okay. Well, it's even easier than it used to be before. Um, because we had this sort of three-step approach in the past, there was weaknesses in, those link, in, the, in the links, and the big weakness was in the way the sketches used to get handled. Let me delete these sketches for us. I don't need those. I'm just showing you what we used to do in the past. But now, what I want to do is to use this body to create um, a face on here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the interpart copy and break the associativity. I don't need that nailed down to the other part. So I can now select that face and move it on to the front, the very front edge of that. I want to pick an endpoint. So we go up to our uh, command bar, filter for endpoints. So I'm just deliberately doing that right onto that vertex. So that face is now lying right on there. And I can use that to construct geometry. Ah, but I hear you say it's not associative. Not yet. But we may not want it to be associative either. We don't want everything to be associative just for the sake of it quite often. OK, let's select that on our command bar, scroll down, and select Extrude. OK, now we can extrude that onto that face. How far do I want it to go? I don't want it to go all the way through. I just want to go onto the that point on there will do. Uh, it went too far, sorry. Not what I did there. I've broken it. Hang on. Select extrude first, not move the face. There we go. So we've got a shape in there. I might put, while I'm here, just put some rounding in there. Uh, make that three millimeters. It should be good. You'll notice we've got that blue flashy face in here. This is the face. It's now called a face set because it's been merged in with this geometry here. Uh, I can just turn that off. In fact, I can delete it. I don't need it anymore. It's just redundant. So I've deleted that. Let's close and return to our top level assembly. And we find now that we've got a shape that's starting to fit. It's very good, isn't it? 
okay let's say that we wanted to make a change to something we go to our select tool pick up the face priority from the pull down and I select the face priority on that if I move that okay it just moves that just modifies that part of that body that uh, that solid it's not really what I want what I want to do is to have uh, associativity on the fly so I can select the cylinder there use my space bar to go into the plus minus mode as same as we do in part and then select that cylinder now when I move this one you'll see them both move together I'll just do that slowly so you can see it on your screens updating so we had associativity there on the fly yep but that's not really what we want what we want to do is to have uh, this part associative to this part uh, to this hole and the and the, uh, and, the uh, and the uh, all the fairing around there maybe even these uh, flats here to be associative so if they move up and down it all moves and for the width to change remember before if I moved that face this one didn't move so I want to make this part associative with the base well we have a command called create interpart relationships now this um, again came in a couple of versions ago but the beauty of this command is you can apply the interpart relationships on parts when you need to not um, during creation so you can apply them afterwards which is much more powerful so let's select that command and it doesn't have a dialog box it's very simple it just has in the prompt bar click on the part or sheet metal component to be driven so I want this to be associated to this so that if the uh, the base changes then the block here changes so that's the part to be driven I select it, it goes green down the bottom again the prompt bar always remember to read the prompt bar down the bottom here um, click on the part or sheet metal component that will be doing the driving so it's the assembly that uh, the assembly it's the um, the base that will be doing the driving now I've selected here uh, I could s say select e equal radius and it would pick up all these relationships now there's a whole lot of them in here so planes cylinders are concentric here an equal radius uh, we've got coplanars we've got concentric equal radius I don't want the equal radius I'm going to turn that off update and save now what it does is it saves these relationships inside the part that's going to be driven so it's going to be inside the uh, vice block there so save simple as that now when I come to make a change here all I'm doing is picking that one cylinder and I can move it so I move that up a little bit and you'll see the other one catch up it doesn't move with it directly let's try something else take that face take that face there and move that down see it update on your screen and click to place it and the fa other face goes with it so I'll do this one again move that down when I click to place it its associative friend goes with it uh, likewise if I uh, move this out so I make that cut out wider and it's very quick you just see this face here update very quickly if I move this one up again you saw this face move up with it uh, it happens very quickly what's going on in here so if we go over to the edge bar we see that there's a link on there right so it means it's associated to something if we select it down in the uh, bottom part of our edge bar panel we'll see the relationships on it's just it's just a grounded part there's nothing special about it but it's driven by vi vice base par uh, so it's driven by this part we can go into our um, tools into part manager and we can uh, show all links and we're short sorted by shorted sorted by the children and in this case we can see that it's a child of the base this interpart copy here uh, is driving the vi the block part um, I can break the links there if I want to so just right click on the on the object and break the links if I want to 
or not doing that if I in place activate and edit into that part again I'll see the uh, interpart copy there I can right click on that and say break but if I highlight those interpart copies what you see is all those faces so all the faces that have those uh, from the um, from the base part are copied through into the uh, into my block part and those are controlling and driving the uh, the the faces through the live rules so it's the live rules that are being applied between the faces and their coplanar or um, or um, uh, concentric or equal radius or whatever other constraints that we uh, created uh, in the command are being applied here so as you can see this is a very very powerful tool I can hide those but if, if I'm editing this part and doing other things but if you delete those or break the link here or break the link it's no longer associative so we might want associativity in there for a certain period of time and then we might want to get rid of it so it's a to me I don't know I think it's a pretty powerful tool it's worth having an experiment with this having a try having a play with it and getting used to using it it truly is so just in uh, before we get into the uh, the, the, the summary um, when you've got questions regarding the clinics and I know everybody does from time to time uh, call our support guys 1-300-883-653 or email support support at edgeplm.com.au uh, I think everybody is aware of those numbers but if you've got questions on these uh, don't call me directly because you probably won't get me I'm, I'm all over the place uh, I'm <laughs> you know sometimes I'm not available and that can be frustrating if you can't get help on something straight away so uh, just in summary I think you'll find that those two things uh, using multi-part for building parts and the associativity tools that we have in assemblies are, um, are powerful tools um, get used to using them so Q&A um, I hear somebody was having trouble with uh, the, the sound dropping out um, I haven't had that from anybody else and it's consistent I've got a, an audio level meter here that's uh, that's there consistently and I think that's um, that's fairly fairly standard uh, I got two of them actually one for the video and one for the the webinar and they've got automatic gain controls and the mic is fixed to my head so it's consistently there um, any other questions everybody knows everything that's wonderful um, no other questions no other questions No, everybody knows everything. That's that's tremendous. Hang on. Okay. Uh, there's a um, Tyson's asking if we can do a, a future clinic on configurations. Uh, yes, we can. Um, if you want to email me uh, with what you want, there, Tyson, it's Mark at edgeplm. Uh, dot com. dot au. <clears throat> by all means uh, a bit be a little more specific on what you'd like there uh, question from Paul when doing a face relate does the whole model move up or just the face just the face Paul um, that's the, uh, the 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 interpart copy it just it just takes the face that's all so it's just that two-dimensional body uh, does the adjust does this adjust over the length over all length and then not keep the original model size not quite sure what that means again does this adjust the overall length and then just not keep the original model size um, when we're building the associativity uh, Paul the, the associativity is built between faces in the model not lines uh, in the past you'd have trouble if you just had a single line because the length wouldn't be kept of the line because it was uh, an indeterminate entity and that's why I said this is a much better way of doing things in my view uh, I find it more robust the the thing that used to break with uh, interpart copies and associativities and assemblies was not the interpart copies not the faces no sorts of things but it was the the lines that you picked off the edges when so when you did the projector sketch 
Uh, one from Andrew Dovin. Can you give us something on the API one day? Uh, that would be very in depth, and I think that only be a very, very small number of people who'd want it. But you know, by all means, if you if you want it, stick in your vote. Um, mark at uh, edgeplm.com.au. Uh, look, I'll put that up on the screen. Let me just uh, go back. But don't call me about the. Um, don't try and call me because it, sometimes you won't get me. But it's. Uh, Hang on. Can't type. I've got a percent sign in there somehow. So if I go back, there are there we are there at the bottom of the screen there. Mark at edgeplm.com.au. That's for uh, things you'd like to see in the clinics. So yep, Andrew would like APIs, and uh, we have internally discussed that. But I. I been concerned about the numbers. It'd probably only be two or three people who'd be interested. But if there's, you know, if there's more, we can do it. Certainly. No more questions. Any more questions? Everybody knows everything, so I might set an exam next time. <laughs> um, guys, look, thank you for your uh, your attendance. Uh, next time, uh, in about two weeks' time, I haven't got a subject yet, but uh, we will be doing. Um, We will be doing um, the the last one for the year. It'll be next time in two weeks' time. So uh, come along to that one. That'll be fun. Oh, there's some more questions come in. Can the coplanar command have an offset? No, but there's an offset command there for doing that. There is in the uh, in the set an offset command. Uh, I don't know if I can see that very quickly. Uh, face relate. It's this one here. Offset. You'd use that one there. Yes, that that would make more sense for what we're doing there because you want some clearance. I was doing a simplistic case. Um, one here from John. I'm new to Solid Edge. Is it possible to view these webinars at other times? Yes. Uh, my final uh, statement, is, as 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 always, is these webinars are recorded, and this one's being recorded right now, and they will be available. Uh, on our website in the uh, in the support area. You need to have a support log on. If you can't find it, just call the support guys and they'll point you to it. But uh, they're all available for uh, supported customers on our uh, on our website. They um, they're hosted through um, uh, through YouTube, so it's uh, and they're all in high definition. So it's actually much better uh, video quality than you're getting through the webinar. Virtual Studio help. So, so somebody like something on the Virtual Studio. Uh, I, we have. I think I've done one on that in the past, but I'm not sure. But yes, we could do that. We could do one on Virtual Studio. A bit of rendering. Um, rendering assumes that you know um, about uh, color and luminosity and those sorts of subjects. So it's somewhat complex to get into, Brian. But uh, we could do one. So again, if you want stuff to appear, email me. Uh, and get other people to email me. The more the more that email me on a subject, the more more likely I'm to do it. Okay. Uh, simply thank you. Uh, thank you all to um, all to uh, all for your uh, your attendance and uh, and uh, good luck uh, for the for the rest of the year. There's not much of it left and. Uh, well, hope you have a very successful new year. Um, okay, guys, thank you.